I asked professional MMA fighter and YouTube content creator Jeff Chan to rank martial arts from S to F based on how effective they are for street fighting and then for MMA. Let's start with the martial art which is close to my heart since I've been doing it for so many years. That's Aikido. For street fighting, I'll give it like an A minus or B. If it's in the streets, the average person is untrained and the average person will overcommit on their punches, overcommit on their push. Sometimes they're drunk. Sometimes they just don't know it any better. Average people don't know how to fight and when they overcommit, that's where I feel Aikido is the most effective from my very general understanding of Aikido. When it comes to MMA, I would say it's less effective simply because your opponent is probably trained and trained fighters are usually less committed. They faint, they fake making Aikido much harder. That isn't to say that it isn't effective in MMA at all. If you can get your opponent angry or tired and overcoming on those strikes, that's when Aikido works. So what's Aikido's score for MMA? I drop it to like C. <laughs> now I'm super curious about the next one, which is BJJ. Since BJJ was so hyped for a long time because the Gracies dominated early UFC with it, but then other fighters learned it too. And now it doesn't seem that top fighters are necessarily BJJ black belts. BJJ street fighting, it really depends on who your opponent is, but average person BJJ on the street, very, very effective. With that said, that BJJ practitioner does need to have some understanding of distance control, understanding of takedowns. Like pure BJJ doesn't have takedowns. The, the jiu-jitsu guy has a bit of takedowns, then okay, I would say A, if not S for the for the streets. But then again, if there's multiple assailants, then that's a little bit different as well. Let's let's go down to A minus. And you, uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put it down to B because the person might grab a weapon. And if you're on the ground and you're tied up with someone on the ground, that, that's a whole game changer again. MMA, I would put it at an A. I would put it at an S and I used to think it was an S because right. you know the Gracies were, were killing it in the in the UFC and at the time nobody knew Jiu Jitsu so Jiu Jitsu was extremely extremely effective but nowadays actually I'm sure you heard the saying you get punched in the face once you become black to brown then brown to, and, and, and so on and you just go down the ladder that's number one number two there's all these certain rules where you should never give your back for example if someone has my back in Jiu Jitsu I should never try to stand up I should immediately try to scrape my back onto the mat and try to get my back on the mat but that gives him a chance to get on top but in MMA nowadays if you have my back I'm willing to allow you to keep having my back and I would try to stand up with you on, on top of me because I can cause a scramble and possibly get you off my back on the other hand if I do the traditional back escape where I slide my back onto the mat now there's a chance that he gets on top and ground and pound is no good another example is when you get taken down from say a double leg normally in jiu-jitsu you would keep your back on the mat and play jiu-jitsu play open guard but in MMA nowadays if you see the top level fighters you get taken to the ground they instantly pop back to their feet and they give their back they're willing to give their back to cause a scramble to stand back up because getting on your feet is better than being on the ground so people used to think like okay jiu-jitsu is everything the best but now it's like okay no no actually there's sport jiu-jitsu and then there's MMA jiu-jitsu. So that's why the ranking for jiu-jitsu has gone down just a bit. What about Capoeira? I would I'd give it a B minus. I don't know too much. I think Capoeira has wild kicks, wild punches. It's very unorthodox. And if you're on the street against an untrained fighter, that kick can land pretty easily, I think. But I think any martial arts can defeat a untrained fighter. I believe all martial arts work. It just depends on the specific individual you're fighting. That's not my first pick just because it's it's a, little, a lot of high kicks head down. Your average person on the street can just like throw a soccer kick to the head at any time. In MMA, I would give it a B. I still don't believe in dropping your hand that low all the time and just kind of like putting your hand on the mat. There can be an, a knee or kick at any moment. With that said, I don't. I wouldn't drop it down to C or D because I like how Capoeira is very unorthodox. Seen me spar and move and fight, I drop my hands a lot, dip my head low sometimes, very inspired by Dominic Cruz. And just because he got head kicked by Joe Vera recently does not mean head movement doesn't work. Everyone gets caught. Throw a jab, you'll still get caught with a jab. As I get more and more experience, the hands down style worked the best for me. And I just think Capoeira has that unorthodox style where you think that you can head kick him, but it's harder than you think. But 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 the, 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 the I think the weapons are not as effective. It, it's a surprise attack. You can catch them with a surprise. So let's, let's go down to B minus. Boxing. I would give an S for street. By the way, if you're looking for a gift either for someone else or even yourself, I have a really cool suggestion. It's an extra, a super slim and functional wallet. This is actually my own extra wallet that I've been using for the past three years. And not only does it still look and feel great, I can't imagine myself using any other wallet. Extra wallets not only take less space than a regular wallet, they also have a quick card access function. But my favorite feature of it all, as simple as it is, is the ability to put my credit card at the back for a quick contactless transaction, saving me the trouble of needing to go 
from my wallet to pay with my card. Worried that your card is exposed for unwanted scans? Then place it inside with the other cards in the aluminum card holder that protects them from skimming. If you're looking for a wallet or a gift, this is a really great option. And especially now, since Extra offers 35% off for its Christmas sale. Just go to shop.extra.com slash martial arts journey and use the code MAG to receive the discount. The thing about Western martial arts, boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing is much more practical, basic, simple, and effective. And it doesn't require too much time to get good at it. So if a guy trains boxing for one year versus a guy who trains, let's say Kung Fu for a year, I believe the boxer will win because Kung Fu, and again, I'm just using this as an example, is so much more complex. Like the way they, they block and punch, it would be like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Like it's, cr it's crazy. It, it makes sense logically. It's so much more complicated and you need to put so much effort and timing in that art for it to be effective. Whereas boxing, you train one class, you learn how to throw a jab cross. That's your knockout right there on the average person. A lot of traditional martial arts don't spar. They don't put it into application. So not only are they not getting the real time application, so the techniques become ineffective. But if a Kung Fu fighter was a professional fighter, then that would be a different story because they're putting that much time into Kung Fu. Now, in terms of MMA, I still keep it at an S because boxing is, is your standard, your fundamentals for, for MMA. The only downfall is the stance keeps you open for low kicks, keeps you open for takedowns. And if the boxer doesn't have wrestling or jiu-jitsu, then that's also a big issue. But I'm assuming that the boxer who's fighting an MMA would know some takedowns or jiu-jitsu. If it's just pure boxing and no takedowns or jiu-jitsu, I would put it down to like a C. But if the boxer knows a bit of takedowns, a bit of jiu-jitsu, then I would keep it at an S. That applies to every martial art that we're gonna be talking about today. Make sure you check out Jeff's YouTube channel, MMA Shredded, after you finish watching this video. It has a ton of awesome MMA and fighting based videos. Ninjutsu. I don't know what ninjutsu is. This is like ninja stuff, throwing stars and stuff. If you have a star and you can throw it on the street, I would give it an S. <laughs> In terms of MMA, it's a, it's a F because you can't use weapons. And that that's as far as my knowledge goes with ninjutsu. There are many styles, but next one is wrestling. I usually think of wrestling as one general thing as well. On the street, I would give it, um, again, I'm saying this assuming that the wrestler has like basic boxing fundamentals. I would say a wrestler is, I'd give it an S on the street. Wrestlers are just like, built differently. Not even in terms of just skill, but just like if you're a wrestler, you've been through the grind and like you're just so physically strong and mentally strong that I would I would give it an S. And same with MMA, having heart, having the grit, but also in terms of technique for both MMA and street, I give it an S. If you have wrestling, you determine whether the fight stays striking or goes to the ground. A good wrestler can take down a striker and a good wrestler can defend the takedown and keep it striking. Do you know of Japanese Jiu Jitsu? I have a general understanding of traditional Jiu Jitsu, which is that it's mm -hmm. it's not close to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's striking and like wrist locks and it's like a combination of everything. I think it's effective to a degree, but the problem with it is that I just don't see traditional Jiu Jitsu guys spawn and putting its application. So we never really see the effectiveness of it. But logically, like it makes sense and it, and it works. It's I think it's a good fundamental curriculum to put kids through to help you understand the basics of how your body works, mechanics. Every school I've been to, when there's a kids program, they usually teach traditional jujitsu because they get a glimpse of a bit of striking, a glimpse of a bit of right. ground stuff and a bit of takedowns. Helps build your fundamentals so that you can apply them in, in or, or, or transition into another martial art. I'd give it a B. B, B, B minus, B minus. Both for street fighting and MMA? Okay. C, 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 C. And again, I, I could be totally wrong. Sure. Jeet Kune Do. I think it's good on the streets. I, I give it a A minus. What about MMA? See, it depends on what kind of JKD. There's like your concept JKD and then there's your principal JKD. Take what works for you and discard what doesn't, which basically turns JKD into MMA. So we have JKD guys who are literally doing kickboxing, Muay Thai, rest, like everything. And then there's pure JKD where it's like the stance is different and it's a very specific stance. And if you don't use that stance, they would call you out on it and say that's not JKD. I'm not gonna make a comment on JKD concept, meaning take what works for you and discard what doesn't. But I'll make a comment on JKD that's pure JKD. I would give it a B minus. Judo. Judo is awesome. Judo is awesome for the street. I actually made a video on best techniques to use on the street, I would say judo because you can take an opponent down, you can throw them in the air and slam them on the ground without falling to the ground yourself. Whereas wrestling, you know, you usually gotta drop to your knee. If it's concrete, that's gonna hurt. Of course, there's body locks and whatnot, but when people think of wrestling, it's usually like double leg takedowns. At least that's my favorite move for wrestling. In judo, you can throw them on cement, you can stay standing. So I think judo is great for the street. In terms of MMA, again, it really depends on how much knowledge they have in the striking department and the jiu-jitsu department too, because the, the problem with judo is when they go for their throws, they over, this is such a powerful sport, they overcommit. So you'll see in judo competitions, they'll go for a throw and they'll, they'll roll after and they'll end up on the bottom. Because 
because they just want to get the takedown and then they, 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 they win. After you finish the throw, you're at a loss. If you have a great understanding as to when to not overcommit, then I think judo becomes effective. But with that said, I'm gonna oddly bump it down to an to, to an A minus. Is it difficult for judo guys to transition to MMA because of the gi? I've trained judo in the gi, but my gi game is non-existent. I can't throw anyone with the gi. But my judo game, no gi, is actually, I would say, pretty good. I've been using judo more and more in no gi only. Uh, no gi, judo works really well. Obviously, it limits you to how many throws you can do, but the way I see things and the way I've been training my martial arts journey is I'm, I'm trying to learn from every martial art, and I'm taking a few things and I'm adding it to my game and kind of just literally forgetting the rest. So in judo, I got about three throws, my go-tos, that I'm, I, th I think I'm pretty good at and I'll, I'll go for it. But any other throws outside of those, I won't, I won't use. Have you ever come across Filipino martial arts? There is a gentleman, doctor actually, Dr. Chris, who I've had the pleasure of meeting. He is a Kali fighter uh, champion. The way he, it's crazy. If he had a weapon, he'd kill me, kill me instantly. I haven't seen him as unarmed combat with Kali. If you have a weapon on the street, I would give it a S. If it's MMA and just my understanding from what I've seen, I'd, I'd give it maybe like a C. Karate. When I think of karate, I think of Wonder Boy Thompson. But that's an exception, no? No, no I don't know. Uh, every every karate guy that I've sparred with, I never sparred Wonder Boy, but any, every guy I've sparred with is it kind of fights like uh, Wonder Boy. Kind of hands down, wide stance, in and out. It honestly, looks all the same to me. Again, it depends on how much knowledge they have in taking the defense takedown in Jiu Jitsu. But for the street, if you have the space, karate is like super effective. It's funny because I used to hate on karate. And I used to say karate sucks. And I used to say karate doesn't work, this and that. But now I find myself using karate so much more. And, 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 I, and I believe karate is super effective, like even more effective than, than Muay Thai sometimes. Muay Thai is my background, but it just depends on how much space you have. On the street, there's many variables. Do you have limited space? Are you in a bar? If that's the case, then karate is gonna be very ineffective. If you're out on the field and you got a lot of space, like a parking lot, karate is very effective. In MMA, very, very effective because you have a lot of space and you have a lot of grip on the floor. For the street, I'd give it a B. In MMA, I'd give it an A minus. What made you skeptical about karate before? When you watch karate practitioner practice, they come here, they punch from down here, and they go, ha, then they, then they go here, ha. But I understand now that that's just like your patterns and that's not actually how you fight. So I obviously had a big misunderstanding of what karate was. That goes with Taekwondo as well. But after seeing real fighters compete with karate, I, I realized how effective their high kicks are, how great their movement is. I used to also hate on the hands down style. Obviously we both know that's not the case anymore, but I used to think like, oh, your hands are down, I'm gonna punch you in the face, it's gonna be so easy. But now I understand it's all about distance management. So you can drop your hands, but if you know how close your partner, your opponent is, you can keep those hands down and bring them up only when they get close enough. That's the, the beauty of karate is you, it's all about distance management. Kickboxing. I would give it a um, a street fighting yes and and for MMA and again this is making the assumption that they have some general knowledge in takedown defense and jujitsu it's it's just like boxing super effective you learn how to throw a kick your first day of class and you kick someone in the body you might break their ribs and when it comes to your average person keeping it simple is what makes it effective when it comes to MMA it's practical effective and the more time you put into it the more effective it becomes what's the reason for kickboxing being lower than boxing because we're we're blending in. MMA and street fighting as, as one, and you don't want to kick to the body or the head in a street fight because there's just a chance of you slipping and falling. But I still give it a B or, or, or an A because you land that one kick to the body or head, it causes a lot of damage. This is a hard game. <laughs> MMA and street fighting. Yes, actually, that's a good point that I didn't mention. In MMA and for the street fighting, you shell like this, it might slip through, but if it punches your form, it still hurts and you're still taking impact to the brain. But it still it still works. If you're tough like Peter Yan, you take those shots, you fire back. So there's two things. If your hands are up and tight, I find my opponents will tee off me and throw punches. When you're blocking, impact, impact, impact. It's making you tighter and tighter and tighter and harder to respond. Whereas if your hands are down, as the punch comes, you can take your head offline and just throw a counter punch. And when your hands are down, it makes your opponent think, hmm, what's this guy up to? Because he knows that you're kind of like baiting him. There's more head movement in boxing and less head movement in kickboxing. Next up, Krav Maga. Krav Maga, I give it, from my understanding, I would give it a um, A minus for street fighting because it's designed for the street specifically. And the only reason why I say this is because I've seen Krav Maga practitioners spar. It just looks like kickboxing. When you see them actually practice, it's very different. But when they actually fight, it just looks like kickboxing. So. I put Krav up there. I've trained Krav for about a year. I think it's it's pretty cool. Lethway. I give it an S for mm. street fighting. I know there's head butts, it's spare knuckle. It's literally everything goes. It's it's great. I've actually sparred with a Lethway fighter. They're not only 
that they got their boxing. They're unorthodox, or at least him specifically, athletic, just like built to kill. I rank it just like boxing. I think a lethal fighter who transitioned MMA would do just as well. Sistema. I've seen a Korean guy blow up on the internet doing it. I don't know anything about it. I don't think it's that effective. I'm not sure I'm a believer. I'd, I'd give it a, a, a C. <laughs> Down with the questionable guys. Yeah, because I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah, it's just it's just one of those things again where I'm sure it was effective, but there's just nobody has proven it yet because no one has proven it. It goes on the questionable level. I hear that Sistema guys claim that it can be effective for fighting since they're teaching to use the kinetic chain, but then where are all the Sistema guys in MMA? Speaking of that, over your long MMA career, did you see many questionable martial arts become effective in MMA and change their reputation as a result? Oh, it's happened with, with so many martial arts, more specifically karate and taekwondo, which I see is, is coming up soon. Yeah, uh, let's actually bring up Taekwondo. When I saw Anthony Pettis fight and, and knowing he has a Taekwondo background, I was like, oh, you know, Taekwondo does work. I think Taekwondo has a lot of holes. If a Taekwondo guy has boxing, jiu-jitsu, wrestling like Anthony Pettis, then I think it can be effective. But by itself, I don't think it's effective. And it's just more flashy and fancy. I'd give it a B minus because they do spar. They do spar, yeah, for the street. Um, yeah, let's go B minus. I think they have a lot of power. Can be surprising, very flexible, but they don't, really protect the face from what I've seen. Yeah. Like they drop their hands straight down and they hop, 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 hop. One of your core martial arts, Muay Thai. Yeah, I give it an S. We've seen it over and over again. Muay Thai guys start transitioning into MMA and they learn grappling and it's extremely effective. I think uh, Muay Thai is super effective just because the weapons they throw is just so damaging and effective. I think it's the most damaging type of weapons. The eight limbs, you know, elbows, punches, knees, kicks the hardest, and they got clinching as well, which kind of gives them a huge advantage. Like I recently posted a video of me clinching with a Thai guy and he just like ragdolled me everywhere. Muay Thai is, is extremely effective in uh, on MMA and in the streets. In the streets, if the guy ties up with the guy, at least he knows how to clinch. Clinching is grappling, grappling and striking as well. Any thoughts about Tai Chi? I don't think it's effective, I give it an F. From my understanding of, of Tai Chi, Tai Chi is just breathing, doing it in a park and working the emotions. Never seen anyone use Tai Chi in a fight. Yeah, I give Tai Chi an F. It's good for health. And longevity. Wing Chun. So with Wing Chun, I think against a untrained person on the street, it can be effective. In MMA, I don't think it's effective. I give it a C. Street fighting, I would give it a B minus because your person is untrained. Any strike to the face with accuracy is effective, whether it's Wing Chun or, or, or Muay Thai. Do I believe in hand trapping in general though? I believe hand trapping works very well, but the way in which I hand trap is very different from the way people hand trap in Wing Chun. Again, it requires your partner to have their rear arm forward and they connect diagonally, but it's very unlikely that your opponent is gonna stand that way. But again, I think hand trapping works, just not against someone who's not using the same art as you. And then it becomes a lot more harder to trap when your partner is fighting in a distance. So I bump it down to a C when it comes to enemy. And Sambo. I put Sambo up with A. The reason why I'm putting all the BGJ, Sambo and Judo in the A section is because the fight usually starts standing. So there's always that one chance that they get hit or get knocked out before it hits the ground. But if, it, if they can close the distance and get to the ground, it becomes very, very effective. But I give the rest of the striking arts an S just simply because it starts standing. I put them almost at the same, but a one level lower just simply because it starts striking and you need to be able to close the distance before you can take the post person down. But yeah, I think Sambo has clearly been proven that it's one of the most effective martial arts. I'm probably gonna get hate on this since uh, Islam just just one and Khabib and they're, they're Sambo guys. <laughs> I then asked Jeff to rank each martial art for MMA if someone did only that particular martial art and then came to MMA, starting with boxing. I would give it a, an S. It still stays an S, right? Oh, oh, oh so they, they have no, no, oh God. This is yeah, hard. they don't know taking uh, on defense. They a, don't a, know a. grappling. Okay, drops so, down to A, got it. A, a, a minus, A minus, A minus. Wrestling. A. Leafway. A. Muay Thai. A. BJJ. A minus. B. B. Kickboxing. A. Sambo? A minus. No, B, 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 B. B. Got it. Actually, no, no, sorry, sorry. Let's go A. A, A is good. A is good. A or A minus? A, 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 A. Let's okay, stick with A. Khabib fans are happy. Judo. B, B, B minus. Karate? B. Karmaga? B minus. Kapura? S Keep it at B. Uh, B minus. Yeah. Jeet Kune Do? Keep it there. Taekwondo? Keep it there. And C. Actually, Aikido. sorry, Taekwondo, I'll go down, down to C. Okay, if it's only Taekwondo. Got it. And Aikido? C. Uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu? C. Kali? C. Sistema and Ling Chen, do they change? E 
no, see, everyone everyone dropped the level down just simply because now they have a huge hole in their game. And now this is pretty much like me being biased. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting though, boxing dropped from S to A minus. The reason why I dropped the boxing down is because Muay Thai beats boxing. A wrestler beats boxing. A person who can kick is going to beat boxing, in my opinion, unless you're fighting Mike Tyson. And then I asked Jeff to rank martial arts only one practice per tier based on how important that martial art is for MMA. Go so Muay Thai for S. Muay Thai would be S. What's the A? Wrestling. A minus. And BJJ. Next one? Boxing. B minus. Karate. Oh, Interesting. Next Kickbox. one. Kickboxing. Kickboxing. Judo. Leafway. Sambo. Cool. JKD. What makes Muay Thai stand out at the top for you? That's just the martial art that I started with. Although I don't stand in a Muay Thai stance anymore. Sometimes I do. It's just giving me the fundamental weapons. I do MMA and I stand in a wide stance that doesn't look Muay Thai anymore. I'm still kicking and punching and elbowing and kneeing like a Muay Thai fighter. I'm just moving with karate four. If you want to see me rank the best martial arts for self-defense, together with former police officer and kickboxing coach Icy Mike, click right here. Thanks for watching and keep owning your journey.